Um, first of all, thanks so much, um, uh, all the participants, uh, for uh, logging in for my introduction to Fuel Positive. Um, I hope to get through this presentation in plenty of time to allow for, for some questions. Uh, so let's go here. Well, of course, first is our disclaimer. If we read this, I'll run out of time. So <laughs> I think we'll move right off of our disclaimer. You can certainly read that at your leisure. Um, so I think, you know, the place to start here for all of us is, you know, especially with the COP26 climate change conference going on right now, uh, I'm sure you're all seeing headlines like these every single day telling us we have a small window of time to take every practical step uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and, and save our planet and our quality of life. Uh, that's where my company, uh, Fuel Positive, comes into the picture, uh, and that's what we're all about. And uh, let me tell you more. So we're a Canadian-based uh, company focused on clean technologies that can be implemented economically today, not many, many years in the future. By focusing on technologies that are clean, economical, and can be built easily on what infrastructure is already in place, Fuel Positive will affect the course of climate change through practical solutions that can be implemented now. Uh, this presentation is all about our flagship technology, which is green ammonia, or NH3, uh, which is its chemical name. Uh, first, uh, let's take a moment to understand ammonia. Uh, ammonia has been manufactured and used as a very important chemical for over 100 years, and today over 200 million tons of ammonia are consumed worldwide every year. Uh, because of its very high nitrogen content, content uh, about 80% of the ammonia produced today is used in agriculture as uh, fertilizer. Uh, it's also used in a number of other crucial manufacturing processes. Not only is a lot of ammonia used, uh, produced, sorry, produced every year around the world, it also has an annual market value of about 70 billion uh, US dollars. The existing ammonia market has been a commodity type market uh, with compound annual growth rates of about 5% per year. The market growth for green ammonia is expected to be many times larger than traditional ammonia, with a projected compound annual growth rate of over 50% between now and 2030, uh, mainly because of all the additional uses for green ammonia, and we'll talk about those additional uses uh, shortly. So here's the problem. Traditional ammonia, or gray ammonia, as it's often called, is produced in massive refineries around the world using energy intensive methods and fossil fuels that contribute heavily to carbon emissions. In fact, the production of ammonia is one of the most carbon intense chemical manufacturing processes on the planet today. Getting the ammonia from the refineries to the end user is also a problem. Uh, right now, we, re we uh, rely on supply chains that are complex, uh, experience leakages and carbon emissions, and fluctuate wildly in terms of the price end users must pay and the availability of supply. Because of the pollution caused by manufacturing traditional ammonia, the search is on to identify an economical way to produce green ammonia. So far, attempts at green production have been too expensive to be practical, uh, but organizations all over the world are working on this because ammonia is so important to all of us. Our engineers wondered, what if we could find a way to make green ammonia affordable? And that's what we've done. Our system takes air, <clears throat> water, and a sustainable source of electricity to produce carbon-free or green ammonia because fossil fuels are not used in the production process at all. And because our new production process uses significantly less energy than the worst of the old manufacturing systems, our green ammonia is affordable. Just like traditional ammonia before it, our green ammonia can be used as a fertilizer, but for the first time, producing it doesn't contribute to global warming. It can also be used as a chemical in any of the manufacturing processes that use traditional or gray ammonia today. And there's more we can do with our green ammonia that no one considered in the past because the pollution associated with gray ammonia. 
Our green ammonia can also be used as a clean fossil fuel replacement anywhere fossil fuels are used in internal combustion engines. Our green ammonia is ideal for use in fuel cells. Our green ammonia is ideal for grid storage, which means we can store energy when it is plentiful and use it when we need it. And maybe the most exciting point of all, our green ammonia is an ideal carrier of hydrogen for the hydrogen economy. And more about that in a minute. So not only did our engineers figure out how to make green ammonia that is affordable, but they also found a way to eliminate the need for massive refineries and unreliable supply chains. We're currently bu building our first prototype production systems and we are planning real world demonstration pilot projects throughout 2022. We call them a production plant in a box because our systems are modular and are being built to fit within standard 20 and 40 foot shipping containers. That means they can easily be shipped directly to the location where the green ammonia is needed, and they can be scaled up or down depending on end use requirements. This is an absolute game changer uh, for consumers of ammonia, and, and we are receiving inquiries from people and organizations every single day because this idea gives them a reliable supply plus a steady and predictable cost to produce carbon-free ammonia for all their fertilizer and fuel requirements. So let's talk quickly about the hydrogen economy. Scientists and governments around the world want to leave fossil fuels behind and build a new economy based on hydrogen, which is a totally clean and natural element. Uh, the problem with this is that hydrogen is difficult to make difficult to store and difficult to transport, uh, but we've got a solution to all of that. Our green ammonia contains a very high concentration of hydrogen, that's the H in NH3, and we believe it's the perfect carrier for hydrogen and the ideal enabler of the hydrogen economy. I mentioned earlier that 80% of the world's supply of ammonia is used by farmers mostly as fertilizer to get nitrogen, the N in NH3, into the soil. Because of that, agriculture is the first sector we will be entering. Ammonia emissions through animal farming practices today contributes dramatically to the emissions footprint of agriculture around the world. But by installing our carbon-free ammonia production systems on farms, we will see an immediate and dramatic decline in the amount of carbon emissions and other pollutants related to agriculture. Farmers will be able to use carbon-free ammonia as fertilizer instead of highly polluting gray ammonia. And the use of highly polluting animal manure, manure fertilizers can be eliminated as well. And the other thing that a fuel positive system does on a farm is it gives the farmer independence over highly unpredictable supply chains that exist today for the supply of ammonia as a fertilizer. And if the farmer sets things up to use our green ammonia to power their crop dryers and gas and diesel powered equipment on the farm, the whole supply chain associated with fossil fuels is also eliminated. This is a profound, profound offering. In other words, farmers will have energy independence on top of eliminating their carbon emissions. Here's what a farm would look like utilizing our system. You can see that the water and air go into the fuel positive container size production unit that is powered by, the st by sustainable uh, electricity sources. In this case, some windmills and some solar cells and sustainable electricity from the grid. The anhydrous ammonia is produced and stored for use in storage, uh, storage tanks. The pharma will utilize our green ammonia as fertilizer, which is injected into the soil by a green ammonia fuel tractor in this case. And our green ammonia can be used as fuel for grain drying or to power any other farm systems the farmer uses, including generators for backup power. Another application for our green ammonia is the vast transportation sector. Most people don't realize it, but ammonia can be used in place of gasoline, diesel, propane, and other fossil fuels used to run engines and generators. Our system is totally unlike the current centralized production systems where gas, for instance, is transported over large distances in pipelines and trucks to get where it's needed. 
Instead, we will place our green ammonia production systems right where the actual end user consumption of the fuel takes place, whether that is at a truck refueling depot or even a regular gas station with access to sustainable energy. The production, storing, and refueling of cars, buses, trains, ships, or even planes with green ammonia would be handled right on site. This is a pretty revolutionary way of reimagining fuel for transportation. We're talking to a number of different segments in the transport, uh, transportation sector right now to identify possible partners. Given the high cost and supply problems with fossil fuels right now, we're getting a tremendous amount of interest in this offering. Another perfect application for our modular and scalable systems is for grid storage. First of all, the energy density of ammonia over any chemical battery is dramatic and exponential. So imagine wind farms and solar farms and other sustainable generation sources having fuel positive systems installed that would take excess generation and store that energy in our green ammonia, which would then allow the uh, sustainable energy producer to turn around during demand hours and run ammonia powered turbines or fuel cells, producing electricity and feeding that electricity back into the grid. This is a much more viable and scalable alternative to any other grid storage technologies uh, we are currently aware of today. I wanted to quickly point out the fact that we expect extremely significant revenue from carbon credit value that we will generate as our carbon free ammonia is produced. Of course, we'll work with local officials in each area to determine the carbon credits for each jurisdiction. We have recently hired a globally recognized carbon credit expert, Andre Meck, to ensure this side of our business flourishes. When you factor in the carbon credit value, the potential margins that Fuel Positive can, uh, can expect will be very, very compelling. And we'll provide more detailed modeling and projections in the coming months. So there you have it. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we expect to make an impact in many vital and emerging markets around the world, from agriculture and chemical manufacturing to our placement for fossil fuels in the transportation sector, from fuel cells to grid storage, as well as decentralizing our vast power grids to enabling the hydrogen economy. Fuel Positive is poised to become a major player in the clean uh, technology, green energy field in the very near future. You'll see us talking much more about expanding our reach in the coming months. A few last things to highlight in relation to the health of the company are as follows. Uh, after raising $12 million with uh, Wainwright in the United States so far this year, uh, and with strong warrant exercise, we're on a solid financial footing and well positioned to execute our business plan. Our intellectual property program is well underway uh, with a very significant provisional patent uh, uh, filed uh, in June of this year. We're building our team strategically, securing the best talent possible to implement our plans. We also believe that through effective government relations and public relations work, we'll successfully attract the most meaningful partnerships in our space uh, to ensure that our solutions are deployed globally with the best partners. The building our, of our flagship product system prototypes is well underway, uh, and we will be in the field with demonstration products uh, throughout 2022. Finally, uh, we're also extremely pleased with the performance of the stock uh, over the last year, and I'm also very happy with the new quality of institutional shareholders that are taking uh, meaningful positions in the stock. We have great advisors on the financial market side of the equation and things are moving steadily forward with consistency and a real genuine attempt to under promise and over deliver in every aspect uh, of our business. So thank you um, for listening. I hope you were able to follow along and I'd, uh, Gilbert, I'd be very happy to take a few questions if there's time. Yes, uh, Ian, there's a few questions here. The first one, Coming from uh, Tim here, uh, he's asking, what's the estimated cost for the ammonia producing module and how long to pay back uh, to the investment? That's a, that's a great question. Um, and we are actually doing CapEx modeling right now. 
Uh, it's, it's challenging because there's a lot of moving targets in the pricing. And of course, the production of hydrogen as the front end part of the system is evolving virtually on a daily basis in terms of uh, prices coming down quite dramatically, new technologies being developed by others and by ourselves. So we don't have, um, we have not published yet rather a, a CapEx model um, that we are sharing, uh, but we will be doing that in the, in the next, uh, probably in the next several weeks. Uh, our expectation is that we'll have um, a very strong CapEx and OpEx model uh, published um, published, uh, and disclosed publicly. The next one coming from Sarah here. What's the time frame in terms of commercializing the technology? A great question. So we are uh, throughout 2022, we'll have a number of demonstration systems. These are commercial size demonstration systems out uh, in the field. Um, as I said, starting initially with agriculture, um, farmers have been using ammonia for decades and decades and understand the use of it and handling of it best. So they're the best uh, recipients of our initial systems for demonstration, proving out the technology. They're also facing supply chain issues that are uh, just shocking. So six months ago, a farmer in Manitoba could buy a metric ton of, of anhydrous ammonia for about $600. Today, it's over $1,200. Uh, and supply is 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 very deeply challenged. So um, so the model uh, the model that we have is while the demonstration systems are out there, we are also building manufacturing capability. And our plan is uh, to build our systems in Canada. It's a Canadian technology. We want to definitely grow manufacturing capability here uh, with export around the world. One of the reasons we're building these on container size platforms, of course, is so that they're easily uh, transportable uh, and exportable um, from Canada to, to points around the world. Uh, another question here from Kyer. You recently raised $7 million. And so who are the investors and what's the use of proceeds? Great. Another good, really good question, relevant question. So uh, all of that investment came through um, our relationship with Wainwright uh, in the U.S. They're all U.S. institutional investors. Um, and I would consider them, many of them, very strategic in terms of the investment space that they're involved in. Um, so they're, they're a good addition to our investor base, as I said in the um, in the presentation. Use of proceeds specifically for this additional raise was to accelerate the number of demonstration systems that we could put into the field in 2022. Um, as I said, we expect a lot of um, both federal, provincial support in Canada for these demonstrations and for manufacturing, but I'm not the kind of CEO who likes to wait around for government money. So uh, I wanted to make sure that we were properly capitalized to ensure that we had um, all the resources necessary to produce a number of systems um, for deployment. Thank you, Ian, for addressing these questions. Uh, we're running out of time, so I'll let you go, but thank you for your time here today. Yeah, thanks so much, Gilbert. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.